Welcome ladies and gentlemen. So what I'd like to do is show you how to graph the reciprocal function as well as identify the domain and range. Now when graphing the reciprocal function, uh, you know, usually on an introductory basis we like to use kind of like a table. Um, but is we with technology we can easily just type in, you know, the parent graph. Uh, let's just see f of x equals, you know, 1 over x. That's going to be the parent graph with no transformations. And what we can see is that graph is going to look something like this. I'm not the best here, but it's very, very important for us to understand this graph is kind of a, uh, what we'll call like a hyperbola. It has these two kind of separate curves. Now, at this point, you can see that there's no intersection with the asymptotes. There's actually a horizontal asymptote at 0 and a vertical asymptote at 0 as well. So a, a vertical asymptote on the x-intercept and a, and a, sorry, a horizontal asymptote on the uh, x-intercept and then a vertical asymptote on the y-axis, not intercept, axis. Um, so that's really important because when we're looking at like the domain of here, it's going to be all real numbers except for 0. So it would be from negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. And when we look at the range, we could say it's going to go from negative infinity all the way up to the uh, asymptote, which is at 0, and then all the way up to infinity. So again, that would be negative infinity to 0 union 0 to infinity. Now I tell you this because all we're simply doing for these problems in addition to graphing them is we're just applying the transformations. So we just need to identify what are the transformations that are going to be being applied to this uh, function and how do they affect them. And those transformations are exactly the same transformations that we use for absolute value, for quadratics, for radicals. Um, for logarithms, it's all the same transformation. So we just need to remember, identify them, apply them, and then, based on the transformations, rewrite our new domain. All right? So on the first example, you can see it's being multiplied by 2. And if you remember being multiplied by 2, that's going to be affecting like the stretching and the compressing. That's actually not shifting the graph left or right, right? And I'll just kind of do a quick little example. I don't want to spend too much time on this. But if we here I have y equals x squared, and then here I have y equals 2 times x squared, all that's doing is stretching that vertically, right? The, the quadratic. So in this example, we have our parent graph. It's just being stretched. And another way you could look at this is 2 times 1 over x. All right, so all that's really doing is just kind of stretching the grass um, vertically. And you know, it, you can use graphing technology if you like to, uh, to kind of see. And that's not really my purpose of this video, is to get very detailed on the grass. Because in nowadays and age, we can just use graphing technology. Um, but we do want to have at least a very, we do want to make sure we have at least a good estimate of the graph, as well as so therefore we can identify the correct domain range. However, this one, since we're not doing any shifting left or right, the domain and range is going to remain the same as its parent graph. It's all real numbers except for 0, because that's where the vertical asymptote is. And the range is going to be all real numbers except for 0, except for this horizontal asymptote. OK? Um, now on this next one, we have negative 1 divided by 6 times x. And a lot of times with the functions, um, a lot of times when we were dealing with functions, you know, if the negative was outside the function or negative was inside the function, that like really mattered. It depends if it was reflected about the x or of the y-axis. Well, the nice thing about the reciprocal function is what we call a odd function. So therefore, it is reflective about the um, reflection about the x and as well as the y-axis. So what you can see here is it doesn't really matter if I reflect about the y-axis or the x-axis. I'm still the reflection is really basically the exact same. So. Again, I can look at this as a negative 1 over 6 times 1 over x. So again, this 1 over 6 is going to be, um, is going to be you could think of this as a stretch or a compression. But if here was vertically stretching, then it's going to be vertically stretching of 1 6, which is going to kind of do the opposite effect. And then we have the negative, which is basically just going to, you could think about it as reflecting the x or reflecting the y-axis. Doesn't really matter. But I'm just going to kind of. Do my best little sketch here. All right. The important thing that I need you to understand, though, is there's no shifting left or right or up or down. So therefore, the domain and range remain the same. So negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity, range negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. OK? All right. So now let's get into some good stuff. Because uh, this one is now we have this graph is being shifted two units to the right. So I want to spend a little time on this one to really make sure we understand 
what this, how this is going to affect the domain range. So here's the, our parent graph, right? 1 over x, 1 over x. 1 over x. OK, now I didn't write in the asymptote, but what there really is is there is a vertical asymptote at 0 and a horizontal asymptote at the 0, meaning these graphs approach those two asymptotes. So when I have 1 over x minus 2 per our transformations, that is going to shift the graph right to units. Okay, So basically what we're doing is we're taking this graph and shifting it over two units to the right. So it's the exact same graph, except 1, 2. Now you can think about both asymptotes have been shifted over two units to the right. Well, this as this horizontal asymptote doesn't really matter if it's being shifted over two units to the right. But this vertical asymptote, if I shift that over two units to the right, it's going to look like that. And that's very, very important because now what you can see is not only has my graph been shifted, but my domain has been shifted. My range, the you know from um, how down it goes up to 0 and up, is unchanged. But my domain has changed because now, instead of 0 not being in the domain, now 2 is not in the domain. So I'm just going to write this as domain negative infinity to 2 union 2 to infinity. And again, I'm using the parentheses because 2 is not included. Range, negative infinity to 0, and but my range is in, uh, included. Okay. So basically what you can do is just kind of understand that, you know, just apply the transformations and see how that affects them. So for the remaining three, uh, just to kind of speed this up a little bit, I am just going to do a quick sketch of the graph um, with the transformation, so therefore I can uh, easily write the domain range. So here, uh, actually what I'll do is I'll first label the transformations though. So here I have x plus 1, so that's going to be left one unit, and then minus 2 is going to be down two units. Okay? So now, based on, and now again we have the 3, right? But the 3 is like a compression, which as we noticed in the first example is not really affecting anything on the graph. So therefore, I'm just going to go to the left one and then down two. That's kind of like my new origin, <laughs> as you can kind of think about it. So I'm just going to draw my asymptotes, which really kind of help me sketch the graph. And then there's no negative, so it's just going to remain the same here. Do, 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 do. All right. Um, over here, you can see that, again, I have a um, compression which is a you know, compression of 5. However, again, that's not affecting. The only thing else I have is a plus 1. So that means I'm just shifting the graph up 1. Shift up 1 unit. So all my graph, the only thing that's changed on my graph is now the asymptote is up 1 unit. OK? So oops, I forgot to write the domain range, didn't I? Um, one thing I do want to notice, uh, want you to notice real quick, is there is no x and y intercepts. And in the next video, I get into talking about the x and y intercepts of the graph or how to identify them. Just notice when you don't have any transformations, you don't have any x and y intercepts. However, when you do shift the graph left or right, up or down, you do now create x and y intercepts. Okay, so that is important. But let's go and talk about this domain here. Um, again, the domain is the set of all x values that make the true, which is everything except for negative 1. So my domain here is going to be negative infinity to negative 1, union negative 1 to infinity. My range here is going to be negative infinity to negative 2, union negative 2 to infinity. And I think the more and more of these problems you do, the more and more you get very, very used to um, writing this up. Here, you can see that to my, since there's no shifting left or right, my domain is going to be unchanged. So negative infinity to 0, union 0 to infinity. And you can say my range is going to be negative infinity to 1 union, 1 to infinity. All right, and then last but not least, now we have a reflection. Uh, we have shifting. Uh, we have a horizontal shift and a vertical shift. So let's just say, you know, again, it doesn't really matter if you want to say reflect x or y axis. It's really just a reflection of an axis. Um, you're going to go right four units and up two units. Okay, So just remember the reflection is going to be in the second and the fourth quadrant. Um, we have to move four units to the right, one, two, three, four, and two units up. 
Okay. So now I'm just going to redraw my asymptotes. All right. And I'm just going to sketch. You know, I'm not trying to get anything perfect here. My main idea of this is, again, to graph it so I can identify the domain range. And again, in this example, let's see, my domain is going to be all the real numbers except for where my at vertical asymptote occurs, which is at 4. So domain is negative infinity to 4 union, 4 to infinity. And my range is going to be all, all the values except for where my horizontal asymptote occurs, which is at 2. So you can say my range is at negative infinity to 2, union 2 to infinity. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen. That is how uh, you graph the reciprocal function, as well as determine the domain range. Thanks.